so it, now we are going to do is in time series data analysis to do the time series functions for that i already discussed that these are the libraries that are commonly used uh, and and most of them are used in this data file so we'll go towards the the, the process we have already loaded the data file it's command is here and then we could go down and now we wanted to calculate the lag value the lead value and the first difference so for that first of all we have to describe the r studio that this is our data file for that first of all we'll check if our original data file is uh, time series data file so is time series df so we are asking r studio to check if the df data file is time series oriented so if i execute it so it will say false because if we haven't told that R Studio that it is a time series data file. How we describe a time series data file? It is df.es, we make a new data file, time series data, uh, time, data file time series equal to time series data file name. It is starting from year 1982 and increasing by one, uh, one unit means it is annual and it will end at uh, 2016 uh, first. And then its frequency is one means this 1982 one means if it is a monthly data, so one means it is January. If it is a quarterly data, one means it is first quarter. And uh, 2016 one means it is January. But frequency one means the data is annual. So 1982 one means one value for 1982. So when I do th this, so it will set the data file when I ask it again that is it is it a is it time series? Okay, so it will plus show me the data file now. It's describing. So if I check it again, so is .ts df. So you will see that it says uh, df dot ts. So it will say two. So df dot ts has uh, it. it uh, what it has done is it has uh, indexed the first column of time and now determine that it is time series data. Now it will use the uh, time series commands. So the other command is df.ts tab, so it's a table of data. So what I will do is I will combine the, the, the data. So uh, what we are combining, so we, I will select this data file df.ts. I will calculate the lag value of uh, column two to nine. So in my data file, column two to nine are one, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm calculating the lag value of all these variables. Uh, it will become a new data file. So minus one means first lag. Then I will calculate the difference that is df.es two comma nine. So what I will do is it will create a new data file and it will have the original data, its lag values here and its difference values so if you wanted to calculate the difference and lag it can be done like this so secondly if you want to add the lags and the and the, the difference in the same data file what you can do is it is df uh, l dot lgdb okay so we are making a new variable that is its name is l dot lgdb and it is actually equal to df l, uh, it will be calculating a lag of df lgdb and n is equal to one L. So it will calculate one lag. And if you wanted to calculate the lead value, what it will do is uh, df f, f is forward. So lead f dot lgdp equal to lead df data file uh, file uh, data name comma n dot one L. So it will calculate one lead value. Then there is a, a first difference. So what I will do is data for data minus its lag. So so now I wanted to see what is what are these. So I will make a table, means a small table. So when I run this, so you can see it's a data file LGDP. Its lag value is, uh, so first data file, they have no lag value, so not available. So 28.6 second has a same previous value. And the first difference and the forward value is 20.6 is forward value is same. So these are for, and then there is first difference. So in time series, we, Sometimes calculate the lag means past, lead means future, and the difference means the rate of change. So these are few few commands that are useful to to estimate the the 
the to calculate the variables now we'll go towards uh, time series variables we already discussed in the previous video that there are the, there are few types of variables like like lag auto regressive moving average and distributed lag so now we are doing is since we find out that our residuals are function of the past it means when the residuals are function of the past it means the independent variables and the dependent variables are also function of the past so we have to include the past facts in the model so whenever you see a lag variable in the model we call it a dynamic model means the past is now affecting the present so the model becomes dynamic so here what we'll do is i will run the dynamic ardl so dynamic linear model we call it ardl auto regressive distributed lag so its name is data file let's make a small name data file dyn so dynamic uh, dynamic uh, output and it's dyn lm dynamic linear model the so dependent variable is d lgdp it is the difference of log of gdp and and then equal to difference of lag of uh, log of gdp and and it's uh, i will add uh, the lag here so how i will add lag so it, i will add l dot difference of lgdp and i will add comma here and i will add 1 so it's lag of difference of log of gdp so it's a, actually the lag of dependent variable so dependent variable was difference of log of gdp now independent variable is first lag of difference of log of gdp so this variable is actually auto regressive variable and then i am adding lag of log of gdp so i will add it as 1 so it's past gdp okay so what is this this is a uh, distributed lag because some other independent variable this is another independent variable and it's past value so this is distributed lag then there is log, log of road from 0 to 1 so road variable is there and its first lag value is there then all other variables so when i run this command so it will estimate a model and then if when i say it summarize it so what I, it will show is that the auto regressive component is there and all the variables are there so this is lag of dependent variable it is insignificant lag of gdp it is uh significant and it's negative significant there is a dot here so dot means this is significant at 1% okay then there is a zero this so it's a level road variable and there is a one lag of road variable level of services lag of services level of rail lag of rail so this way in this model you are able to see the auto regressive variable and the the uh, you are able to see the distributed lag variable and in, in the previous example you already understood how to interpret these variables so this way you can um, uh, run the ar dl model in r so the, now after running it you need to optimize it how you optimize is you you look at how which, which are the lags which are significant so looking at here is the c variable only the level is significant the lag is not so i will remove the lag and you see the rail the lag is you cannot remove the level because it's part of the model so in level lag it is insignificant so i will remove the lag from rail and in services the lag is insignificant i will remove it from the rail and then the road the lag is insignificant so if i run it again you now see that there is more significant variables why because they were useless variables in the model and they were making making it insignificant so let let so ar component is significant and the uh, ma uh, the, the dl component is also significant the rail and c are now significant but the road and services are not so what you can do is so since it's a random model in your model it it should be significant you have to change it and find appropriate variables to make sure they are significant further what you can do is 
that uh, in in time series you can plot the growth of a variable so uh, the growth variable i calculate uh, it's a new data file and it's only gdp okay so if you uh, so in time series uh, since the variables are function of the past now we have to look the uh, look uh, how what are the types it is following in terms of function of the past so there it, the function of past have some length so how to measure so this command of 88 is actually making a new data file using only a one variable so you can do, use this or you can just pick the data file so there are two graphs that are usually used in uh, in uh, time series that is acf which is which is auto correlation plot and there is pacf which is partial auto correlation plot so both of the plots are actually used to explore the nature of the variable with respect to its past so auto correlation when i run this graph you will see a plot so what it is doing is in auto correlation it is actually uh, co correlating the variable uh, the present variable with all possible pasts okay and and uh, so uh, at at uh, at present so it's highly correlated with the present uh, all pasts and it is at second level it's present correlated with one lag of all pasts and then so it is showing that uh, in in acf plots that the the present data is highly correlated significant so these are critical values the blue lines are critical values so the bars are uh, significant up till i think 7 so it means that uh the aggregate effect of past is significant up till 6 7 lakhs so it means the data is very persistent so it is correlated it, it it is uh, it is being affected by the aggregate past up till 6 lakhs second is partial auto correlation plots here you can see that the present of the variable is only correlated with first past one but all others are insignificant it means that if you look at only uh, 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 if you look at the if you so let's differentiate with it between acf and pcp acf let's go on a you know, on a um, uh, screen share and then let's discuss so i will write it down and then you will understand so what is partial what is partial so what it is does what it does is it will calculate the correlation between present means yt with uh, i will add dash comma y t minus 1 so first of all it calculate uh, the correlation between the present and its first past then it will calculate uh, y uh, y t with y y t minus 2 second past then y t comma y t minus 3 third past and so on and these are the correlation between the present and the specific past value so it will then plot it okay so so each bar in the plot will show the correlation of present with that specific past value we call it partial means there is only one past then there is a uh, auto correlation plot so what what we do is so for for auto correlation plot you need to remember one thing so first of all i will give an example y t is equal to l a plus a a plus b uh, uh, we we can make a model without any uh, without any independent variables so let's say it's intercept plus et per term so we already know that this is a time series data past is affecting the present so but there is no past variable in the model so et will show the will show the net effect of all pasts okay so it means uh, in the previous model we are using single past value 
now we are using the aggregate past all pasts all possible pasts and and in in economics or in economics we write it as it is actually random shock so uh, because all positive pasts and negative pasts are assumed to cancel each other out so all all pasts are cancelling each other so we assume that uh, the net is zero so if you see any positive value it will be a random shock because we expect it to be zero now so what acf does is auto collision plot what ac plots does is so ac plot so above one was the ac plot so in ac plot what we are doing is we are calculating correlations of of yt with et then yt with et minus 1 y yt with et minus 2 and so on so now you understand the difference between partial auto collision plot and auto collision plot in partial auto collision we are actually looking at single unit in the past but in auto collision we are looking at the aggregate past all past values so so the both both graphs are actually two ways to assess how the variables is affecting by affected by the past values so now come back to let's go back to the r studio again so now you can see it here that so the partial auto correlation plot will show the how how past is uh, how uh, its behavior is with respect to a specific past so if the data is quarterly you will notice that every fourth value is affecting the present but if data is monthly you will notice every 12th value is explaining the present but it's an annual data so only one past is affecting the present while 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 for the case of partial auto correlation plot so you are saying uh, you are looking at see, so this is actually showing us that the, the the random shocks are affecting the present value up till 7 lakhs so it means the data is so sensitive or or it is so sens sensitive to the past that if there is a shock 7 years ago the data will still be sensitive to it and it will be showing a pattern so there is a there is some effect of 7th lag is more effect of the 6th lag 5th uh, lag 4th 3rd 2 1 and 0 lag so it means that that we we are able to see that the the, the its data has a high memory with respect to past so this way we we see the the rigidness of a data how it is moving with respect to past variables 